Hi, it's Bob with Top Choice Real Estate, bringing you the word on the street, talking Indiana real estate. I just finished reading an article in Zero Hedge uh, about the highest home price to income ratios in the entire United States. As the article leads, many Americans continue to find home ownership financially out of reach. But hey, who has it the worst? That'd be the West Coast cities, followed by the East Coast cities. In fact, every city in the list of the most unaffordable cities in the United States in the top 10 are on the East Coast or the West Coast. Hey, and who is the kingpin? Who has it worse of all? Well, look here, it's Los Angeles. They top the list. You know, when I started in the real estate business, my mentor schooled me that there was a certain number that you wanted to keep within when you were looking to buy a home. You wanted your income to be in proportion to the house price no more than that number. And guess what number they came up with? The answer is they schooled me that the safe solid number was two and a half times your annual income. If you spent no more than two and a half times your annual income on your house, you'd be in good shape. But hey, what's the scoop nowadays? Well, in Los Angeles, it takes 12 and a half times the median income to buy the medium priced house. That's crazy. And in fact, in the most expensive 28 cities in the United States, it takes at least five times the annual income to buy the median priced house. So, hey, tell me how that works. In today's world, the median household income in the United States is 75,000 a year. By my old school calculation, the average home price should be right around 188,000. Now, there's no way that's the case, right? In fact, it's close to $353,000. Ouch. That number is 88% above that safe, solid target that I was schooled on when I first got in the business. So again, tell me, how does that work? The answer is straightforward and simple. It doesn't. So people ask me, what can we do? Drum roll. Hey, the answer is quite simple. You can move to one of the nicer mid-tier cities in the United States where you can buy an average home for less than four times the average income. I'm talking about places like Columbus, Ohio, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Louisville, Kentucky, Kansas City, Missouri, and yes, Indianapolis. In fact, Indy was way down on that list of the most expensive cities in the United States, all the way down at number 47, making it one of the very most affordable cities in the United States. And with the ability to buy the average priced home at 3.6 times the median household income, Indianapolis is in fact one of the most affordable cities in the United States when it comes to housing. So if you're considering moving here, you're gonna to wanna to pick up our relocation guide. It's free and there's no obligation. My staff and I have prepared the ultimate relocation guide and you can get your copy below. Now, if you have a home to sell before you can buy, this next section is guaranteed to make you money. But if you don't have a home to sell, feel free to skip ahead. I'm gonna share a current market update so you can be the first on your block to know just how you can win big in this market. So if you're thinking about selling, have you ever wondered if you're gonna to have to paint or re-carpet? Or maybe your brother-in-law told you that you just have to fix up your bathroom. Hey, follow me. I'm gonna arm you with some knowledge so you can make the best decisions that will make you the most money. And I'll share secrets on how I sold my last five homes in a grand total of less than 30 days. Number one, you are now in the business of selling real estate. This is no longer about your house. It's time to focus on making it someone else's house. If you're going to get emotionally attached to a house, do it with the new home that you're about to buy. Number two, we use professional photography, which means to you, people will put eyeballs on your property. That plus our marketing will equal lots of interest. But so I hate to tell you that even with all that interest, people are gonna do their best to talk themselves out of walking through your home. It drives me nuts, but our job, your job, is to get them from the street to inside the house. Hey, they're gonna drive by and they're gonna do their best to talk each other out of walking through the house. So, curb appeal matters a lot, more than it should. Hey, if you think about it, you live 90% of your time inside your house, about 9% in the backyard on the deck or playing with the kids, and about 1% in the front yard. And that's usually when you're shoveling snow or mowing the grass, not doing something that's a whole lot of fun. But hey, you only get one chance 
to make a first impression. So you're gonna wanna be sure to trim the overhanging tree, put the trash cans out of sight, put the bikes and basketballs away, hey, and bring some color. Flower baskets in the summertime, maybe some mums in the fall, you got Christmas or Halloween, 4th of July, you got big bright flags. Put some color between the street and your house. Number three, say you do manage to get them to the front porch. There they are, the realtors fumbling with the lockbox, trying to get the key out. And what are the buyers doing? They're looking around. They're seeing the cobwebs and the dirt and the grime and the front door that hasn't been cleaned in God knows how long. So, hey, make sure that they're staring at something clean and sharp. First impressions matter. Hey, you may never use the front door. If you're like most people, you come in through the garage, but you're gonna bring everybody in for a showing through the front door. So, hey, paint the front door. Knock down the spider webs, power wash the front porch. If you don't have the equipment or don't wanna do it, I know a guy. Number four, once they're inside the front door, the priority begins in the front hallway, and it works back from there. First impressions again. Hey, I've had people take one step inside a house and go, hey, Bob, this one's just not for us. We're out of here. Hey. So the least important things to get done are the basement, the kid's bedroom, the garage. You can have all the boxes in the world in the garage and it doesn't matter. The side of the house, don't worry about power washing that. That's the, like the last thing that you do. What matters is everything as you move back through the house. That's what's most important. So concentrate your efforts beginning there. Number five, there's a saying and it's God awful true. Kitchens and baths sell houses. Now, the price point may play a role in what you do. A few years back, I was doing a listing presentation with somebody and it was a pretty nice house. I mean, it was kind of unique, but it, it was pressing a mill. And the guy just refused to consider putting granite countertops in. He said, well, the people will, they'll want to choose their own. Sorry, people looking at a million dollar home do not want to look at Formica countertops. So consider what price point you're at and then do the things that need to be done to sell it to somebody shopping at that price point. You want to motivate them. It's not about you. It's about them. Make it attractive to them. Make them get their checkbook out. So you may want to consider, do the appliances match? Are they all working? Do all the burners work? Or is it obvious that there's something wrong with that kitchen range? Hey, it may not have bothered you. You may have lived with it for 10 years but a buyer coming in those are like trigger points for them is to say well maybe the house hasn't been taken care of or it just doesn't give you that first impression you may need to tile a bathroom or update some plumbing or electrical fixtures hey it all depends and when it comes time to show your house or have people walk through your house you're going to want to remember this because yes it's a pain in the donkey but Kitchens and baths sell houses. So take the time when people are walking through that those things look sharp. Number six, you're gonna wanna walk through your house and you're gonna wanna thin it out. You wanna look at your countertops and the, the, the tops of chests of drawers and bookcases and all those things and you wanna remove half of the items there. You wanna box them up, you wanna move them out, you wanna give it to Goodwill, you wanna haul it away. Then you wanna do half again. That's about what most of us have on our tops of our counters and our chest of drawers is way too much stuff for the person coming in looking to buy. Now, this doesn't cost you a whole lot, but it does take a little bit of time and effort. Now, I don't agree with realtors that say you need to depersonalize your house totally. I think you need to convey to people that the people living here like to live here. Buyers like that feeling. They can tell when they walk through a house and it's a divorce situation and the guy's sleeping on a bed on the floor that doesn't help create a good feeling. So, hey, you do what you can to make it feel warm. Even if you take out a lot of the personal stuff, leave enough so that they, they get a feeling that somebody enjoys living there. Hey, people even like seeing those uh, notes on the kitchen table or on a chalkboard that say, 10 things we love about living here. That's something you might wanna think about. Number seven, people ask me, should we get a pre-listing inspection? That way we could repair everything in advance. And I go, no. Hey, here's what inspectors do. They come into your place and they write for three hours. That's how they justify their fee. They're there for three hours. If you get a pre-listing inspection done and you repair 30 items, when the buyer's inspector comes in, he's gonna write for three hours. And you're gonna have this another list that's equally as long as the first one. 
Every house has a list, and they're long. They go 50 and 100 items. And you know what? When you move out of your next house, you'll probably have that list too. Besides, you don't know how the buyer's gonna respond. You know, buyers have different comfort levels about different things. One guy may be an electrician. Another one, the wife's brother may be a plumber. They may not give a hoot about those problems, okay? So, unless it's something just real glaring that's gonna get in the way of the sale, up front, somebody writing an offer, hey, let it go. We'll deal with it at the time of the inspection, okay? Number eight. Now, there are some problems that just must be taken care of. If you've got asbestos or mold or stained ceilings or pet odors and stains, those are deal killers. I mean, people don't want to hear about asbestos, okay? It scares the living daylights out of them. If you know you got a, a situation there, take care of it before you put the house on the market. If you have black mold hanging off of something or other, get it taken care of before the people start walking through your house. Stained ceilings, people go, oh, I don't wanna to have to paint that ceiling. Hey, let me tell you, people walk through a house and it's one of the things that lots of people know and the guy will look at that stained ceiling and he'll point it out to the wife and then they'll walk through the house and he'll come back and he'll point out that stain in the ceiling. Now, you may have put a new roof on your house in the last year and it's not a problem or fixed the toilet five years ago but never painted the ceiling. But it's a problem to that buyer and you lose the buyer because you didn't get out a can of kills, paint it, and then paint the ceiling. And if you don't want to paint the whole ceiling, hey, I know a guy. Not to solve these problems will cost you more than the repair work. Number nine, carpets. Hey, if they're dirty, clean them. If they have wrinkles in them, get them stretched. If they're just beyond use, replace them. And I know a guy for any of those jobs or for laminate or hardwoods as well. And your price point may dictate just what you need to do or want to do or have to do, okay? But again, first impressions. Number 10, paint hides a lot of blemishes. And this is especially true if you have a vacant house because when you move all your furniture away from the wall and take the paintings off the wall, there's gonna be these marks. And so the paint needs to be touched up or the room needs to be repainted. It's a cheap fix and it goes a long way to getting your house sold. And not just sold, but sold for the most money. Number 11. Hey, you do whatever it takes to get the house ready to sell and you got all life going on and the kids have got ball games and you know, all of these things and you're tired, but guess what? The house needs to be clean. And I mean really cleaned. It needs to kind of shine. So hey, clean it or have it cleaned and yeah, I know a guy. Okay, number 12, almost done. Remove the screens if you can. It will make the amount of light coming into your house that much greater, which people love, okay? If you have, uh, if you live with your curtains closed, open them. Again, you're in the business of selling this property. It's not about you anymore. It's about the potential buyer getting their checkbook out. So, hey, have the windows washed. Brighten the place up. Clean windows just shine. Okay, and hey, I know a guy. Number 13, let's talk about staging. It's not something that a lot of people consider, but hey, cold vacant houses do not sell very well. And this may be a price point thing, but I view staging everywhere from about, I don't know, 250,000 on up. So, you know, that's not like major, major price point in today's market. Staging, professional staging can really make a difference in getting the most money for a house, selling it in the quickest time and with the least hassle. Every time I sell my own house, I put myself through this exact same exercise. I'm convinced it's why I've sold my last five houses on average in less than six days. And no, I didn't give them away, rest assured. Hey, on the first one over in Glendale, I'd been working on the house and I'd gotten it all fixed up and it was late on a Saturday afternoon and I loaded up all my tools and I had a pickup truck which just loaded with stuff and I'm pulling out of the driveway and the last thing I do is I stop and I get out and I put the for sale sign in the front of the house and, the, and an open house sign. And this truck comes pulling up and the guy jumps out and he says, he's like dialing the phone and he says, hey, hey, can, can my wife and I look at your house? And I, I'm like, man, I'm beat, I'm going home. And I, he, he says, no, we really, my wife's gonna want this house. I, you know, sure, sure, sure thing. And we keep 
talking a little bit. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. He couldn't get a hold of his wife. And I said, I'll, I'll tell you what. I've got an open house tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and I will be here at eight o'clock. And, and if you want to get a look before everybody else does, be here at eight o'clock. So the next morning, I'm there at about 10 to eight and the guy's already there. He's got his wife and he's got his realtor. And so I take them through the house and they say, give me a minute. And so they're out back uh, sitting at the uh, table on the deck and I'm getting ready for the open house. And so about 10, 15 minutes later, the realtor walks in and says, hey, can we have a minute? And so I go out and hey, you know what? 15 minutes later, we had a signed agreement for a full list price plus the realtor's commission. That's what you call a quick sale. So, hey, I pulled the open house sign and I went home. The second house, hey, I sold that one at the end of the first day. The third house was up in the mountains in Colorado, and that one was an outlier. It took all of three weeks to sell. Number four, I sold on the Monday following the first weekend. And the fifth one, I sold on Tuesday after the first weekend. Hey, I hope you found this helpful and that it will help you sell your house in six days or less. Hey, we offer a free room by room analysis. I'll walk through the house with you. We can share ideas back and forth. It's free, there's no cost, there's no obligation. And I guarantee you, I'll help you make money and I'll help you save money by not doing things that you don't need to. Hey, to schedule a time, call or text me. Make it a great day now. Coming up is my latest monthly market update with actionable data to fuel your real estate success. Today I've got the monthly market report for the month of September 2024. In drum roll. Hey, housing inventory continues to increase across central Indiana. It is up 11% year over year, and that is a good thing. Leading the charge is Hamilton County, falling right in line at that 11% increased mark. Inventories have grown, now get this, even though closings are up 3%. So that means inventory is increasing faster than closings. That means more people are putting their houses on the market for sale, but that activity is slowing just a bit. Half of the homes are now selling in 18 days, whereas a year ago, that number was 12 days. Hey, and you probably wanna know, what have prices been doing? Well, prices have been stable across central Indiana. The median price is now holding stable from a year ago at 300,000. Hey, and maybe you wanna know, can you get a big discount off a of price? Well, hey, discounts are going right now about one to 2% off the list price on average, which means that the typical house selling for 300,000 was probably listed right around 305,000. Inventory has grown over 11% over the past year. So how many houses are on the market? Drum roll. Hey, there's now 5,027 single family homes on the market for sale. And with mortgage rates now back down into the sixes, it just might be a good time to take a look at what homes are available. Hey, FYI, I can set you up with an intelligence search for just the type of home you're looking for. I can take into account location, schools, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, age, style, you name it. Heck, I can even sort for the size of the garage or if it's on a lake or not. I can sort for a whole host of factors that are important just to you. Let me know if that interests you. I can help you find and secure the house that's just right for you. And there's no cost or obligation, so text or call me. If you're considering relocating to the greater Indianapolis area or moving anywhere within central Indiana, be sure to tune in every week to learn all there is to know about real estate and living in Indiana. Whether you're buying or selling, please keep in mind, I work harder to make good things happen. Hey, make it a great day now. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch this next clip right now.